is the Fifth Estate, a conversation between young African scholars from the Fort Hall School of Government and Professor Mutahinguni. This Sunday, allow us to take you to school on the subject of war gaming. We want to use game theory to analyze the relationship between William Ruto and his boss, President Uhuru Kenyatta. This will tell us who will win and who will lose. But we will also ask the question, what would happen if win and lose are no longer the only options in wargaming? What if there is a third alternative? We will further ask the question, what game is Ruto playing and what game is Uhuru playing? Who is playing a simultaneous game and who is playing the sequential game? Who is playing a finite game and who is playing an infinite game. A finite game has known actors, is played using a set of rules and there is an agreed objective. The purpose of a finite game is to produce a winner and a loser. But an infinite game has both known and unknown players, its rules are constantly changed without notice and it has no winner or loser. 2022 is a finite game. It has known players, an agreed set of rules, and an objective, electing a president. It will also have a loser and a winner. Terrorism is an infinite game. It is not meant to produce a winner or a loser. In fact, Wargaming under terrorism is no longer about who wins and who loses. It is about inflicting as much pain on the opponent and exhausting them until they drop out. And so we ask, between Uhuru and Ruto, who is inflicting pain on the other? Who is exhausting his opponent? Who is playing an infinite game that has no rules, its players are unknown, and the results will not produce a loser or a winner? And who is playing a finite game? And if he fails in the game, he is buried alive. We ask these questions to advise William Ruto. The reason why he is losing is because he has subscribed to the finite game, while Uhuru and Baba Man are playing the infinite game. Ruto's wargaming is about becoming president. Uhuru's infinite game is beyond a loser and a winner. It is about the third alternative survival of the country. Ruto is playing a simultaneous game. Uhuru is playing a sequential game. Running a marathon is a simultaneous game. Everyone runs at the same time and the best man wins. But chess or tennis are sequential games. For you to play, your opponent has to play first and then you respond. This way, you are able to size up your opponent and adjust your strategy. But simultaneous games like marathons do not give you time to reflect. You just run. And this is how Ruto is doing politics, because he is just running. He has no time to reflect on Uhuru's moves and adjust strategy. In the meantime, Uhura's sequential game waits for Ruto to make a move before he makes his. Or he makes a move and waits for Ruto to respond. And this is how Ruto has fallen from trap to trap. From failing to show up during state functions, thinking he is being clever, to the embarrassing loss he suffered in Parliament this week. Ruto has been reduced to an unsightly disaster by his simultaneous games. But if he plays the sequential game, he might just recover. 
ama namna gani my friend let us take a break from war gaming and interrogate political truths using philosophy for any truth to hold it must pass two tests the first is articulated by the coherence theory of truth and the second by the correspondence theory of truth for anything to be true it must be coherent and consistent if ruto has the numbers the ground truth must show coherence and correspondence if not it is a lie on bbi he told us he had the numbers but the ground truth showed little or no coherence or consistency out of 47 counties 44 voted against him at the county assemblies and then he told us that gema was with him but out of 550 gema mcas only 4 voted for him then came the national assembly this week 235 mps voted against him retaining only 85 mps mainly kalenjins and political marketeers and in the march fourth by elections he got only 0.72% of the popular vote winning one seat out of seven where are the numbers good people if it is not coherent and it is not consistent it is not true it is a lie and ruto numbers is a consistent lie my friend back to game theory if uhuru is playing an infinite game what was his bbi victory this week about for starters it did not matter whether parliament passed bbi or not if they rejected it the constitution says bbi would be taken to the referendum and if they passed it it would still go to the referendum if so why humiliate ruto this week in parliament and the answer is simple for ruto the vote was about bbi but for uhuru the vote had nothing to do with bbi in fact the fight between babaman and orengo was a decoy covering the game of primary thrust in our view uhuru was doing a dry run for ruto's impeachment and because ruto cannot stop running his mouth he missed the point to impeach him all you need is 233 mps and in the bbi dry run uhuru raila and the bearded sisters marshaled 235 mps to show they can impeach him and in our view this will happen after the referendum and after icc's preparations to revive ruto's case are finalized if violence erupts after impeachment icc will be ready to pick ruto and this is the infinite game for you and now a random thought it is about kikuyu political conmen selling the house of mombi to william ruto one day a kikuyu conman called abunwasi was selling his house to a politician he gave him a 10% discount if the politician took the whole house except a nail that abunwasi had put in the sitting room this nail would remain abunwasi's property and the politician agreed a few weeks later abunwasi came to use his nail in the politician's sitting room he took off his smelly jacket hung it on the nail and left 
The next day, Abnuasi hung his stinky boots on the nail as the politician was having visitors. And thereafter, he hung a bag of rotten fish and dead animals on the nail every day. The house was smelly and unbearable. The politician had to abandon the house to Abu Nuasi. And this is what the Kikuyus have done to the house of William Ruto. They have a nail in his sitting room and each time there is war gaming, they hang something smelly on the nail and the entire house of Ruto stinks. Konjiri Kimani was the latest bag of smelly fish from Lake Nakuru. <laughs> and he ensured that Ruto stinks. <laughs> <laughs>